Now we're going to go to our favorite area in EMS and the CQI program. Um, this is an area that, again, I'm on two services. I have a responsibility to help do the CQI of those services. And I tell you what, I struggle. I'm the same person doing two services. What was really cool, I recognized when I started doing it, I was like, why am I doing this twice? I can do it once. Just plug in the numbers for the other service, right? Why am I evaluating these numbers and slightly doing this different over here? It was a nightmare. But if I did it the same way on those services, it becomes a lot easier. It becomes a lot less work. And then all of a sudden here comes system standards. And system standards looks at CQI. It talks about evaluating the system. It talks about helping each other out. Uh, I can guarantee you that all our services in the White County are very, very happy. We have one CQI policy. We work on it together, it comes out, and it's pretty much managed as a system. I know Evelyn, she comes out and inspect us, that's, that's awesome for her too. <laughs> There's a one CQI program. Um, when she goes to these services, she knows we're all, we're all the same. Uh, we're evaluating the system in itself. That's a very, very important. You can build a system, but you have to evaluate that system. You have to collect data in itself to understand if that system is working or not working. You know, our, our system changes. It changes constantly depending on our needs, depending on what's going on in the world. Our system changes. We have to make adjustments to those changes. Uh, I know currently our system is changing in numbers. We have less and less, even the professionals are, are cutting back on the number of staff they have. So the fire service, fire-based services, they're, they're pretty good to cover their animals as what happens. They get by animals calls they can't come cover a fire. Because they're all on animals calls. How many they, do you remember how many people are staffed to run for fire on ships? Is it twelve? Uh, eleven, I believe. Eleven? They have five animals. Let's do the math on that. How many fires can they fight if all five animals are there? So even these numbers games and, and keep can constantly evaluate the system. They have to realize when they get the ambulance three out that they automatically create an issue here. Uh, and then we do this just by constant reevaluation. Uh, um, obviously, it's really, um, talk about compliance, and again, this goes back to Evelyn, it is a huge, huge help to our system. We have a service in our area, they do about 15 calls a year. And we could probably just say, in the first response service, we probably lost like 15 calls a year. A whole year. It's only 15, right? The ambulance is coming anyway. It's going to be there 10, 15 minutes later, their first response, but it's 15. Of course, it's important. We don't want to lose that service. But guess what that service has to do prior to our system standards? They've got to do all their CQI program. they got to do all the exact same stuff as Rose and Fire, who's doing 3,000 calls a year. But through the system standards, what we're able to do, and I'm Mediapolis, and they're, they're our first responder service, we're actually able to incorporate them in our service, keep their own identity, they're out there, they're still your own fire first responders, they're awesome. But you know how relief it was when they didn't have to do all that paperwork? <laughs> it was a huge relief. It was such relief that they were going to fold because they didn't they no longer keep up the paperwork, and now they're still out there. That made a huge difference. I guarantee it made a difference those 15 calls were going out there. So that was very important. I think that's one big benefit, I think, of CQI to help the smaller services, the fact that we're all working together, we all help each other out, and it really reduces the burden of paperwork, evaluation, all that good stuff. Um, community needs on a data collection in itself. You know, we have a lot of funding out there, and I find it interesting after 9-11. I think we could have had enough funding to respond to a nuclear, a nuclear accident at a local nuclear plant. I, I really do think we get the funding to do that. Guess what? We don't have a nuclear plant around our area. So why in the world are we able to have funding for that? Um, one thing about data collection, the community needs to really assess what do you need. The only way that we need to know that we need funding to go out and fight uh, cardiac emergencies, to get funding for that, is to collect that data. Um, bath salts is a big thing that has popped up in the last couple of years that is really accelerating our area. And the only reason why, you know, we don't, we don't go around and say, hey, man, this dude had a bath salt. You know, we 
We used to say it was crazy. You know, we can't talk about each other, right? And we're not supposed to talk about our calls. But through that data collection process, all of a sudden we see a spike that we need education just by collecting that data on bath salts. We know that's a problem in our area. And we had never known that would reflect the data on our roads. Um, one thing we talked about is reporting PCR data. And I can say that they're looking at changing RS, the uh, right out of front of writing RFP on how we collect data for our trauma. We're looking at the EMS right now. Most of us use a web first system. I think all of us use a web first system. At some point, either you mail it in or you type it in. And we're looking at doing some slight changes of that. But the biggest thing I noticed being on that committee is the hospitals are also looking at that. They also ask to enter all this data. And let me tell you, they let us go first and talk about our little problems. And I, I actually apologize when they explained their problem. I said, I'm really sorry that I, I even complained about the way our system works, because your system has really got an issue. <laughs> They're reiterating data over and over and over and over and over and over again. And one thing that looking at committee, we talked about before, the PCRI data is linking us together. You shouldn't have, one person shouldn't have to enter information about the same patient 20 times. And you think I'm joking when I say 20, I'm not kidding you. First responder service, ambulance service, possibly a tier service, possibly a transport service, <laughs> the hospital, the hospital they're going to, um, EC Park that they go to, they're pre-entering the same information for data collection. And that's one thing I think going into the future, they're going to talk about, and I think uh, Frank talked about all about that one, is one patient. It's not. 20 patients, it's one. It's one set of information. We're going to be able to track that patient from the time they call 911 and dispatch until the time they get discharged from the hospital. I don't care how many hospitals we go through, that's, that's their ultimate goal. And it's also our goal in system standards that we'll be able to track that patient. Because don't you always want to know after you treat a patient how well they did afterwards? What you did was right. Right now, there's no way to actually do that unless you ask that somebody lets you know. And some hospitals call on the head there, they'll, they'll let you know. But this will be the way to collect data. It's something to go out there. Um, the other thing about report data, I know we, we, we uh, set the meeting about collecting data. And uh, the individual said, I, I said, I need a way for my first responders and my animal service now our medical director, our one medical director, can look at those reports. He shouldn't have to look at this report by himself, and hopefully get this report by himself. I want him to be able, when he looks at this patient, this says I have another report out here from the first responders. I have a report from the transport service. I report from the inner facility transport service. He can look at the whole thing. And the response was, well, that can't be done. And I, you know, I've, I've done it. Well, he didn't realize I used to be a computer programmer. And when somebody tells me I can't, they just want me to be a father of two girls, and then I can't do that. Well, that just puts a fire on me. <laughs> and anybody sitting there knew that that, that that fired me up. I went, yes, you can. No, you can't. We tried to can them. I'm like, no, no, you can't. And guess what? About a month later, I got a, a phone call saying, I apologize. We can do that. And we are doing that right now in our system. Our medical director can access all those points. So just one more step we're going to the hospital.